Welcome to Weld.com. <clears throat> been putting out a series of educational videos. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button. We're starting to have a little fun around here. You'll want to be included in it. And also check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Running a series of gas metal arc welding videos. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing short circuiting, globular, and now we're up to the spray. We're increasing in values and doing some different stuff, changing up some gases here, and we're trying to get some good close-up video, show you the weld pool, have you listen to what's going on here with some of the sounds here and sights of the weld pool. So on the uh, short circuiting and the globular, I ran off the Rebel EMP215, and this Tweco 180 gun is what comes with the Rebel 215. It has a little short contact tip in here. And people have actually asked me when I did a, we use this same machine on a self-shielded flux core video. And they said, well, how come you got the nozzle on there if you're not running gas? This contact tip is held in by the nozzle. It threads in and the gas diffuser is built into the neck here. And when you thread the nozzle on, it holds the contact tip in. Okay, so this gun that I'm getting ready to use on the EMP 235 IC Rebel is a Tweco Spray Master gun, air cooled. And we've got a longer diffuser and a longer nozzle here that has some, it's kind of built for the heavy spray, the heat and everything, latent heat. So when it threads together, my contact tip is actually recessed a little bit more into the nozzle, which brings us to the point of stick out, electrical stick out, nozzle. How far do you hold the nozzle away from your welds? On short circuiting, I like to always keep about three eighths of an inch. It's a good condition good gas coverage. On spray, I like to hold it off about five eighths to three quarters of an inch. Better gas coverage. I don't like putting that, uh, I don't like putting that contact tip right down there close to the weld. So I always like to hold it back just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to do some demonstration welds here and I'm probably, I'll do one of them on some light gauge material. This is a leftover weld from the globular transfer, a fillet weld and a, a T-joint. And I did a quick downhill. And I'm gonna go ahead and weld on this. The only thing that may save this is because it has that weld back there, but I think the heat value is gonna be way too much. This weld pool is gonna be way too hot, too fluid for this thickness of material. I wanna run some sample beads. I'll change some values. I wanna run a lap weld and I wanna do a, a heavy fillet weld. This is on 3 8 thick material. This process lends itself to heavy construction, fast fabrication on heavier material. Uh, we've done some stuff on 3 quarter inch material where we're stacking beads, 045 wire, 27 and a half volts, 375 inches a minute, 95.5 gas, and uh, hot fluid, you know, again, we're limited to the positions of flat and horizontal with this process. Don't want to go uphill, don't want to go downhill. Uh, I will make a mention, I might start an argument here, but I'll go ahead and say it. It is possible to do this in the overhead position with a fillet weld, because I've had to do it numerous times. I actually used to be pretty good at it. We'll, uh, we'll get frisky one of these days and demonstrate that whole deal. Let's talk values for a second. <clears throat> on, the, on the short circuiting and the globular, I was running 030 diameter wire, ER70S6. On this particular process that I'm gonna show, I'm running 035. My values are 27 and a half and 430 on the wire feed speed, 430 inches a minute. When I get done welding each of these passes, I should be able to glance back and it'll tell me what the amperage is registered. Different machines are going to give you different values, 
different gases are going to get you different values. There's, you know, when you talk about the spray mode, we need to get above a transition current. For a given wire diameter and a given gas, there's going to be a, a reaction there. It's going to be a transition current where this is no longer globular. The end of the wire essentially becomes a needle. Okay, and we have some great footage of what that looks like on camera. Close up, extremely nice footage of what that looks like. The end of the wire has got such a current density. To think about 27 and a half volts and 300 amps going through a piece of wire. I mean, that's cooking. The end of the wire is shaped like a needle. It's just a flame. With short circuiting, we had that bacon frying sound. We had that sizzling sound because the wire's coming down and shorting out against the material all the time. This is kind of quiet. It's a hiss. And people have preferences on how they set their machine. I'll go ahead and tell you my preference. I like to kind of oscillate. Some people are going to call it whipping and I don't. It's not a whip. It's just gently rocking the torch. I like to oscillate forward, pause or oscillate back. I oscillate forward a quarter inch, back an eighth. I just kind of do that rocking thing. I grew up doing it and it's kind of like my timing. I have a hard time just starting a, starting a weld and going real smooth. You know, I always mess that up. I, I jump forward a little bit, weld pool gets narrow, I pause. I show all those variations. But for me, if I just gently rock it, it seems like I keep in a little better timing. And if I do mess up a little bit, it's, I, you know, it's kind of hidden. And anyway, I want to run the series of beads here. Today we are going to run 92.8, 92% argon, 8% CO2. Um, we could do a whole video on all these various gases, all these different values, the voltage and wire feed speed and all that stuff. And then we can get into all kinds of cool stuff with cut, etch, depth of fusion, all kinds of stuff. We're just trying to keep it simple right now today. I want to run some beads. Again, we're 035 wire ER70S6, 27 and a half volts, 430 wire feed speed. That's kind of going to be a base, and I'll make some adjustments. 92% argon, 8% CO2. Hmm. I think I had a lazy finger there at the end. I was holding on to my gun really light. I don't squeeze the daylights out of it. And that was me that I let off. I'm just running a test run here. When I was running this, I noticed uh, I've got a little bit of the silicon brown deposits in it, but basically there's a little island of it just kind of floating along the top of my weld pool. So that's a test run there. I did have to turn the voltage up somewhat. 90, I'm sorry, uh, 29 volts, 450 on the wire feed speed. I may have some power fluctuation going on here in the shop. Let's just go right into this little rascal here. I'm not using this as a heat sink. I'm just using it so that it doesn't move if I, when I start my wire, if it comes out of there and charges into it, grounds it. This is about the electrical stick out that I like to use. Now, that looks like about a half inch or so away from the nozzle. You gotta keep in mind that the contact tip is recessed up inside the nozzle. So I'm about that five eighths, three quarters that we talked about earlier. I'm gonna try to make this weld. I don't know, I, you know, if I had to bet, I'd give it a 50-50 chance here because this is so hot, so fluid that I may just cook the edges of this weld. So this may be a condition not to use it. If we get away with it, it's because I traveled really fast.
undercut the toe of the weld bad. Got a dark color to it. No weld's too big. This will lead up to the next process that we'll demonstrate, and that is called pulsed spray. Pulse spray is really cool on using it on thinner sections, weld fast. It's a fluid pool, but it freezes, and that's what it's used for. Good little demo there. Again, while I was welding this, I noticed that the even though the material is clean, the edge is the toe of the weld, way too hot. They were like fluttering, both of them. Learned my lesson on that guy right there. I've got a piece over here that I can throw down on. Done correctly, I should be able to fill this up in one pass. Hot, fluid, flush, a little bit of crown to it. Fair application, quarter inch bevel. But here's where it really lends itself. Got three eighths plate, three eighths and above, half inch. We can run all these different wire sizes. Um, did two hot globulars over here. I'm going to run a fillet weld in here. This first pass, I'm not going to try to fill the whole thing up. I'm going to get it up there close, but I'm not going to try to go over that edge because that's carrying way, way too much metal. So 29 and 450. I think I want to increase this wire feed speed up to 475. Good hot weld, deep driving penetration. I'm watching it kind of go into the throat of that weld. Not a whole lot to clean up. We've got a few BBs or a few little buttons of silicon deposits out here. And then the last one's way out here on the tail end. Good weld mechanics. The toes of the weld wetted in nicely, hot. Fluid, definitely would not want to run this uphill. Wouldn't want to run it downhill for that matter. That hot little mama out of the way. Let's go to a fillet weld. Here's where we have a little fun. We get to build up multiple pass welds here. Again, good clean hot weld. Pretty much same width all the way down through there. I am, uh, I am knocking some smoke stuff off of there, which I like to hit with a wire wheel or a hand wire brush. Camera guy had me all discombobulated upside down a second ago, so I switched it up on him. Got up here where I could see Okay, um, you know, here's where it lends itself. Heavy plate fabrication. Uh, you could even do this on rollout piping. Uh, done correctly in the right position, the right speed. We'd be welding up here about 
10, 30, 11 o'clock. You can have your pipe rolling away from you. You can get in there and do some fill passes real quick. So, you know, we ran this first bead in here, second bead down the toe of the previous one, and the third bead, and you can see the profile is cut in there nicely. It wets in at the toe of the welds. Uh, it's not humped up. It, it lays in there nicely. We've got a little black down here, a little soot. No big deal. It's going to happen all the time. Our wire angle is slightly forward, straight in. I was a little upside down so I could accommodate some cameras over here, but you know, hey, it's hot, fast, and uh, fluid. So again, we're not going to use this downhill. We're not going to use this uphill by any means. It's just too fluid. So I hope you found this content educational. If so, please subscribe to the videos and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching Weld.com.